Hello and welcome back, and that is right, a Thunderbolt 4 NAS. That is the landscape that we're living in right now. A number of you over the last year or so have been inquiring about whether QNAP are going to make that jump into Thunderbolt 4. It looks like they have been listening, but it is making sure, I just want to make sure when you're watching this video today that you keep things in context. This is not a powerhouse NAS, and although we're going to talk a lot about the specifications of uh, the TS464T4 uh, that we're learning about from CES 2022, it's worth remembering that this is not going to be a high-end NAS. This is going to serve as a great entry point into small content creators, smaller video production companies to make the jump onto Thunderbolt NAS. That great reinvention of the workflow that a system like this can kind of scale out to a number of users out there. But again, what I'm going to do in today's video, it can be broken down into two very distinct parts. And if you are coming to this video because you want to know the specifications, don't worry, we're going to knock that out early doors. In the second half of the video, we are going to talk a lot more about Thunderbolt NAS in general, Thunderbolt 4 NAS, and keeping people's expectations and realistic understanding of what this system can and cannot do tempered. We have to make sure when you look at a solution like this, that you're not thinking it's going to do something it's not. And a lot of the fault of that comes down to how systems like this, not so much are marketed, but what people's expectations are of Thunderbolt 4 as well. So first and foremost, let's talk straight away about those specifications. Now, the Kinap TS464 T4, or as I'm going to call it for the rest of this video, the T4, um, utilizes uh, the same hardware architecture that we've seen from a number of 64 series releases in the closing stages of 2021. This is part of the SMB series. This is to make uh, an affordable entry point into Thunderbolt NAS for smaller prosumer users, maybe professional photographers, those that run wedding photography, those that do video editing for YouTube and the like. This is a solution for those of you who are running smaller teams that want to reinvent the workflow but still keep all of that storage accessible in a central location. So, the CPU inside of the Celeron or Celeron based processor, uh, it is the N5105 or the N5095A processor. This is when um, Intel were kind of refreshing all of their series because of COVID and the pandemic. A lot of the ranges kind of clanged against one another and their roadmap kind of got a bit muddled there in terms of the releases out there. Consequently, for the next few years, you're going to see a lot of solutions with Intel processors where the CPU that's listed will almost certainly kind of fluctuate between one to three different CPUs. A lot of that is because of Intel, but don't worry, the CPUs are near enough identical. And in this case, it is a quad-core x86 64-bit processor, and that CPU is 2.0 gigahertz that can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz per core. It's also, you know, got a great floating point. It's got embedded graphics there, so transcoding is available. And again, you can't really have a Thunderbolt system without a CPU that can handle graphics. The two come hand in hand. Now, from this point, a lot of the specifications I'm going to talk about, I'm sure already on screen, are ones that either QNAP themselves have confirmed or we can make educated guesses about. Now we'll stick a big old TBC on the ones that aren't confirmed. For example, the memory. We know this is going to be using um, DDR4 Sodium and based on that model ID and the way QNAP have run this series um, over the last few years, we know it's almost certainly going to be utilising the same chassis as that of the 5.3D series and indeed the B series that came before. Consequently, it's going to be using sodium. It's almost certainly going to be DDR4 with that CPU and it almost certainly is going to arrive with 8 gig by default. I think that's unquestionable given Thunderbolt there. You, it's quite a hungry little process, that one. And uh, I think it's going to be 8 gig by default and given that CPU, it means you're going to have up to 16 gig there. But again, I can't see the including 16 by default there. Um, on top of that, this system is a four bay NAS system there, so that's four hard drive bays. That means each of those bays supporting up to 20 terabytes. That means even in a RAID 5 scenario, this has the potential standalone of up to 60 terabytes of storage. Yum, yum. Now, we are going to talk a little bit more about RAID because that is definitely something to bear in mind with a system like this. But on top of that, there is also the inclusion of two M2 NVMe SSD slots inside. That means that this system is going to be featuring uh, the utilization of those SSDs that are either going to be available to you as standalone storage, yum, yum, either as tiered storage, which means that you have a merged collection of storage media of hard drives and SSD with the system deciding based on utility and um, rapidity of access, which data lives on which storage tier for faster access, 
or uh, outside of Qtier, you can utilize it for standalone caching, where more frequently accessed files are copied onto the SSD, and therefore, based on read or write activity, advantages are given to the end user. So again, nice to see those two tiers of storage there available to you. On top of that, let's talk about network connectivity, and let's talk about that Thunderbolt. It features two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now, Thunderbolt 4, for those that aren't aware, kind of... It, many people, when it was first announced, kind of thought a bit of Thunderbolt 3.5. Luckily, they didn't call it that, because that would have been super annoying. Are you listening to me, USB? Um, now, with Thunderbolt 4, it still has a maximum potential bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, or 4,000 megabytes per second. But do bear in mind, once again, it's very easy to be tricked by these things. 40 gigabits per second is the maximum bandwidth. It's the size of the pipe. It's always dependent on the hardware architecture and the media inside how much you can fill it. It's very, very important to understand those two are not the same damn thing. Now, those two ports there will allow a connected user via Thunderbolt 4 or via backwards compatibility, Thunderbolt 3, to connect with this NAS and directly interface in a stylistic DAS style, and I'll talk about that later on, to interact with the NAS. So that's two people that can interact with the NAS and its data at the same time. At the same time as that, this system also arrives with a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. So again, that's up to 270 megabytes per second network Ethernet and indeed direct connectivity with the right adapters. And it has a 10 gigabit Ethernet port as well. That 10 gigabit port allowing you up to, up to have up to 1,000 megabytes per second throughput means this system has a wide variety of network internet and indeed direct connection options open to you and your connected users and workflow. So to paint a scenario, you could have one to two people editing files directly on the NAS via Thunderbolt and at the same time allowing a 10 gigabits per second or connected 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection to the wider network. We have people working in distribution, in packaging, in all kinds of smaller, lower file level services for distribution and packaging of the editing products that the two connected Thunderbolt users can work on. It's a great way to reinvent the workflow where all of your connected users are all using that same system there. Now, alongside that, there is mention of USB, of course, on this device, but they didn't really confirm what that is. It's almost certainly going to be at least one, maybe two uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports there. So again, that means you can connect media of up to 1,000 megabytes per second uh, via USB. You can't interface with it using no, uh, that port, of course. There'll be either USB standard 3 or USB 2 on there because there is also an HDMI 2.0 4K 60 frames per second port there. So again, this is a huge number of connections on this system for both um, having that visual interface out, but also editing files on this system at all times. Now, that's pretty much everything we know about the hardware architecture of this device. And it's from here that I kind of want to talk about people's expectations and realistically looking at what a system like this can do. Because one of the biggest failings, and I include for QNAP as well as end users on this, of Thunderbolt NAS as both a concept and in its execution is the language of it. Now, when you buy a Thunderbolt DAS, that is a direct attached storage box, a Lacey, a GTEC, stuff like that, when you connect these devices, you connect them and you interface with them immediately. They pop up as an available storage drive on your Mac or Windows system, and you can interact with them. You can back up, you can edit, all that kind of stuff. Now, Thunderbolt NAS isn't quite the same. It, it does allow direct connection with it, but it uses a protocol called Thunderbolt over IP or IP over Thunderbolt, the way the order of those words changes all the time, depending on the direction. Now, what that means is you are using IP protocol. IP protocol, in its most basic form, is the network protocol that a NAS uses to interface with the wider network, a switch or a router or stuff like that. And it allows a user to interact with those files and it makes the files accessible to multiple users at the same time, but also allow one user to still interact with it with the same degree of fluidity. Now, in order for the NAS to facilitate both NAS and DAS services, it needs to have a balance there. And it's the reason why Thunderbolt NAS never really hits the full degree of performance that Thunderbolt DAS does, because it has to balance that fluidity in its architecture. Now, 
a lot of people when they buy a Thunderbolt NAS system, they are under the idea that when they get it, it will be as fast as that. And it won't be because of that fluidity and the access. But the other incredibly important thing to bear in mind here is this is not some towering rack mount. This isn't some massive eight bay device. This is a four bay NAS. And if you populate this with hard drives, those hard drives, even if you stack them in the right RAID, like a RAID 0, which gives you no safety net, but does give you a greater performance as the RAID is reading and writing from multiple drives simultaneously, the result is that even though Thunderbolt 4 allows up to 4,000 megabytes per second bandwidth, it, those drives are not going to be able to fully saturate that connection. And once a user connects with it, I think realistically we're going to be looking at between 900 and maybe 1200 megabytes per second based on optimal media via that Thunderbolt connection. The other thing to bear in mind is multiple users connecting to this, they're not all going to get the same storage media. If all four of those hard drives are being accessed by a single user, I hate seagulls, and another user connects via the other Thunderbolt port to interact with the same storage area, Although they've both got access to that 40 gigabits per second connection, they're both sharing that storage media. Now, yes, there are the SSD bays inside, which is great to see, which means you can create a separate storage area for those editors to use as like real editing, scratch disk, whatever. They can edit some of that high-end media there. But still, nonetheless, once you also include in the 10 gigabit Ethernet port and or the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, I think it's very important that users understand that a system like this even though it has all those multiple connections on there, you are still using a 4 bay NAS there. And most users are going to use a RAID 5, which means RAID 5, not quite as fast as RAID 1, is still going to bring the performance down. It's still an incredibly useful box, and it's still going to be a great entry point into um, photo and video editing for a lot of users that want to utilize the Thunderbolt port. But you've got to keep realistic there. And also on the subject of realistic here, Let's talk about our hardware architecture. Um, this is the follow-up to the um, early 2018 release, TS-453 BT3. That was the earlier generation of Thunderbolt 4 Bay um, NAS slash DAS system from QNAP. It was the first time they brought out this combo, and it was incredibly popular. But as mentioned, early doors, a lot of users bought it and went, why am I only getting 8, 9, 1,000 megabytes per second? This is Thunderbolt. I should be getting thousands. I've explained the reason why. This new system's gonna have, it's got a better CPU, it's gonna have better architecture there, and it's gonna be using Thunderbolt 4, which takes advantage of a greater um, internal gigabit PCIe architecture. So the performance is gonna be better, but it's still gotta be kept relative to that four bay there. Now, when I talk about that architecture, the reason I bring that up is because that CPU is a Celeron. It is a quad-core Celeron. It's not an i3 or a Pentium or an i5 or a Xeon like the two, three, or four thousand pound QNAP Thunderbolt NASes that are made for enterprise and high-end television broadcasting. This is a little four bay for SMB, small, medium business, and prosumer users. It has a limited chipset. It has a limited PCIe resource um, available to it and by that what I mean is this CPU and its chipset can only support a finite number of things simultaneously. That means that even though it has those M2 slots those aren't going to be three times four slots they're probably going to be three times one or three times two which means the SSDs are probably going to have between one to two thousand megabytes per second maximum bandwidth each on those SSD lanes. So again it is an interesting box but just keep your feet on the ground there. There's going to be a reason why when this system launches, it's probably going to land somewhere, I reckon, between 900 and maybe 10, 50, 1100 pounds. It's going to land at that spot because it's got to live within the portfolio from QNAP, but also because its abilities, as long as QNAP play a straight game and make it abundantly clear what the maximum performances are, it still makes it an interesting purchase, but still nonetheless, I, I want users who are coming into a system like this to keep things realistic. Now, moving forward on the subject of realistic, let's talk about the good things this system can do. The entry point that you know this presents to a lot of people working in content creation who are going to look at this as a much more affordable alternative to those XT systems and those high-end ZFS systems. This is going to act as not only a Thunderbolt editing system, but also it's going to open the door to that 10 gigabit per second and Thunderbolt merge in there. What I mean by that is 
Till now, a lot of systems that have Thunderbolt 3 or 4, generally, if they do have a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, they have to be incredibly expensive systems. Whereas a lot of users will end up using adapters. QNAP themselves have one, but this is Sonic's one as well. A Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit Ethernet connection adapter there. Now, that costs somewhere between normally 160 to 300 pounds, depending on the architecture of the 10 gigabit and the complexity of the adapter. Now, this system, because it has both 10 GBE and Thunderbolt 4, which again, backwards compatible, it means that a connected user with their laptop or desktop that connects to this NAS via Thunderbolt will also have access to the 10 gigabit network port. That means it acts as an adapter for users that don't have 10 GBE that want to access an existing 10 gigabit ethernet network there. This system will allow that, which again, once you look at the cost of those adapters, uh, again, ranging on average for about 200 nicker, that's a great saving and inclusive element of this system that is available to it. And again, that means that the wider 10 GBE network, if there are other 10 gig systems or other 10 gig NASes, it will make transition of data between all those systems significantly better. Now, on top of that, it's worth highlighting with this system, that price point has to exist between the existing um, SMB systems and the Thunderbolts. Now, I don't think we're going to see a 6-bay version or anything like that. I'd love to have seen that. But this 4-bay is going to sit very neatly between the other 4-bays in that product family. And if you're, in the, if you're right now, you're considering buying a 4-bay NAS system, um, and you are working in a largely Mac-based environment, or you are involved in content uh, creation in a small or big way, this could present an exceedingly interesting alternative to buying a non-Thunderbolt NAS system. Now... Again, how does this compare with the 453 BT3 that I talked about earlier on that you may have purchased in the last few years? It's just better. It's better in every way. The 10 gigabit Ethernet port on there that this system arrives with is on board. It's not using a PCIe card. It is on board. The same goes for those M2 slots as well. So it's going to be exceedingly useful to most users who are looking at purchasing an all-in-one encompassing solution that has all of the hardware ready to go on day one. Now, it's not going to be ZFS equipped. That architecture is nowhere near um, powerful enough to support ZFS. It's going to be an EXT4 system, so you've got your QNAP QTS5 platform to play with, which is great. For those that don't know about it, again, I've done a whole review on it previously. Do check it out on the channel. But again, file management, multimedia management, backups, cloud gateways, um, VM tools on there, surveillance tools, eight camera licenses, all that stuff. It's an incredibly well-equipped system there. And QTS5, their latest version, although there's certain tweaks to the design of the GUI via the web browser that I'm not massively in love with, in most other regards, it is still a great, a very versatile and kind of very customizable platform there. And if you don't even want to use that stuff, you've still got options like iSCSI, Map Network Drives, and lots of targeting tools and uh, client synchronization tools that will allow you to interact with the NAS via Thunderbolt, 10 GBE, network, internet, whatever, utilizing your proprietary first party stuff like Mac Finder, Windows Explorer, that kind of thing. It is a great platform, and I am really excited to see, one, how straightforward QNAP are going to be about the marketing of this box, and two, that price point. I can see this arriving in the first quarter of 2022, maybe erring into April, but still, it's going to be really interesting to see how straight down the line they play this product, because it has the potential to be massively popular. And of course, it's the world's first Thunderbolt 4 box. They're Thunderbolt 4, a bit of a damp squib for a lot of users out there who are looking forward to some big leap over Thunderbolt 3, but still nonetheless, better to have this box than to not have it at all. If you want to learn more about this system as we learn more, then do click subscribe below. If you've enjoyed this video and want to learn more um, about the things on this channel and make things move forward in terms of production, you may have noticed new lighting in a camera rig today, um, then do click like. It helps me understand what I'm doing right and makes each video better than the last. And finally, if you need advice, if you're looking for a new system, a new data storage system, and you're a bit on the fence, you're not 100% certain what you need, then do take advantage of the free advice section down below at NAS Compares. Genuinely free. We don't do anything with your email address there. We couldn't care less about your email, to be perfectly honest. Uh, there's a donate button. Use it. Ignore it. It's manned by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. We try to answer every email. It's unbiased. It's honest. We will just help you choose the right solution for you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great 2022, everyone. Let's get on that. I'll see you next time.